Hello and welcome. I'm Padma Rao and this is World is One, a show that brings you the best political minds from all over the world. In an increasingly polarized world, watch these leaders share their ideas, discuss challenges of the world and present perspectives to pressing problems around us. This week on World is One Global Leadership Series, we have Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe is unique by many standards. He is a rare South Asian politician to take the oath as Prime Minister four times. But going beyond that, he is also one of the first to join hands with Sri Lanka's biggest rival party, the SLFP, in a grand coalition. That coalition was formed merely to topple a former government. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe talks to me at Temperatories, the beautiful official residence of the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Mr. Prime Minister, let's start with your relationship to India, your big neighbour. You did say when you came to power that you would, uh, your government would do its best to improve relations with India, which had gone into a bit of a deep freeze under the previous government. Yet, uh, other than a few high-level uh, bilateral visits, not much seems to have moved uh, as far as the relationship is concerned. Can you tell me uh, what your government is doing to assure New Delhi uh, that things will improve? For instance, your relationship with China is seen in New Delhi circles as a strategic threat. We have always been friendly with China, but not at the expense of India. We are friendly with many countries, but we don't do so at the expense of others. Our relationship with India is different from our relationship uh, with China, or for that matter with the United Kingdom. So what you have to look at is our relationship vis-a-vis -vis India not get too worried about how we are doing with China or how we are doing with UK or anyone else. Now, as far as we are concerned, the government and Sri Lankan government and the Indian government do understand what's happening and we are moving closely. So, if there are some uneasiness, it's the Indian media that reports from their point of view. Well, that, there's nothing I can do about it. We have, we have our good uh, defense relationships, we have our economic relationships, uh, we are looking at a number of uh, uh, projects, uh, we are looking at uh, how uh, India can participate in the Sri Lanka's effort to develop the Trincomalee Harbour together with Japan, it's been planned out by Subana Jarong, which is also doing Amaravati in uh, India. We are both committed to seeing the success of uh, Bay of Bengal uh, as an economic area and if we feel in the next 10 years there is a lot of potential. We are working with each other on an economic and technological uh, cooperation uh, agreement and I think that will also lay the basis for a closer relationship between Sri Lanka and the economies of the five southern states which should be at least $500 billion and if we all work, it can become nearly a trillion dollars. On the security side, there is very close relation, uh, sharing of uh, information. There are a lot of informal contacts between your ministers and our ministers, between your officials and uh, our officials. I think this has been one of the good periods uh, of the relationship between India and Sri Lanka. Prime Minister, I agree with you, uh, Sri Lanka's relationship with China is of course your sovereign prerogative. However, you have a very, very large overseas debt, a twelfth of which, that is about $8 billion, is towards China. Uh, surely China is not just offering you all this development uh, as, a, as a hand of friendship. Surely that's a hand of friendship which is more of an iron fist in a velvet glove. I don't know why you are so worried about uh, China. No one has offered us an iron fist with or without a velvet club. The bulk of the Chinese loans have been on infrastructure projects. In opposition, we have argued on whether some of those projects were the best options. But you have to remember, after the 2007 crisis, that uh, China was one of the major players who gave assistance to a large number of countries and uh, for infrastructure development. It also helped the Chinese. Chinese sent their workforces out, they sent their even the food stuff all went out 
and uh, China did give. So don't, uh, I don't think you should take Sri Lanka as an uh, exception. Ma many countries got the assistance from uh, uh, China. Now they have started the AIIB. And in fact, uh, if at all, it is uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa that really form the special friendship, not Sri Lanka and uh, China. And some, some people feel that the BRICS are trying to dominate even the uh, other, other countries, other developing economies. So there are different, different uh, views. Uh, now we don't go to cooperate with China or Brazil or anyone on the uh, global economy. But uh, yes, we have taken a large amount of loans from China. Uh, repaying the loans, not only from China, but the others are commercial loans, are a concern. And uh, therefore, we are now inviting foreign investment into the country. So, but in Hambantota, you have offered Chinese companies equity in exchange for some of that debt and even land for a free trade zone. And then the nearby Matala airport is said to be actually run by Chinese companies. And in Colombo, there is the Port City project, uh, $1.4 billion, which is virtually in the hands of, of, of China. So surely that string of pearls of China is uh, somewhat beginning to choke or uh, Sri Lanka runs the risk of being choked by that string of pearls. Sri Lanka has been the hub of the Indian Ocean and even from time immemorial, Chinese ships have come to Sri Lanka in the, on the Silk Route. As far as Hambantota is concerned, that port was built with Chinese assistance. There is also an agreement that uh, President Rajapaksa had uh, with, uh, I think, China Harbour to further develop and run the operations there. All that we have done is to say that we are unable to pay the debts of uh, uh, the Hambantota Harbour. Therefore, we won't be able to uh, proceed with it or we will have to offer it for anyone who is willing to take it. Uh, we discussed this with the Chinese and finally persuade the Chinese government for debt to equity uh, transfer. The um, plan is we, some Chinese companies applied we took the best and we have got for uh, the Chinese uh, willing to go up to 1.1 billion to pay for their share of the joint venture. We have 20 percent now for the SLPA, we can go up to 40 percent or even to 45 percent. So if anyone else in Sri Lanka wants to invest, we will give them the freedom to invest in the harbour. But it is a joint venture and the joint venture uh, area of land is leased out and uh, it will come back to us when the lease is over and the military and the security aspects of the port is in the hands of the Sri Lanka Navy last week your uh, naval authorities and our naval authorities are having a discussion on this matter. Uh, Matala airport is run by the Sri Lanka airport authority but we thought we will call for first for anyone who would be interested in running the Matala airport jointly with the Sri Lankan Airport Authority. We have land, we have a large amount of land in Hambantota. So we have the port, the port must have a load to carry which means there should be industries. The land will be vested in the Ruhuna Economic Development Corporation and they will lease the land out for any industrial estate operator. The Chinese have uh, indicated interest in taking some of the lands. But just outside that, there is a very good uh, block of land which is uh, also fully developed. It's closer to Gaul than Hambantota, and that uh, we want to develop that together with the Andhra Pradesh Industrial Infrastructure Corporation. There is another land in northwestern province. We are talking to Subana Jorong on making industrial estate. Thais have come and looked at it. So it's like any other country. Industrial land is being held by the government, and. Uh, any interested investor could certainly lease out the land and run their uh, industrial estates. We like it because that means they will be bringing investors in here. Even India is discussing of further uh, industrial estates in Sri Lanka. Is that an open invitation to India also regarding Hambantota? Well, Indian ships can come to Hambantota, there is no problem at all. And we are working with India, as you told me, we are developing a Trinkamali port and we would like India also to participate and take a project or two there. So we would like uh, Japan. 
Prime Minister Vikram Singh, Chinese naval submarines have docked in Colombo and caused great consternation in New Delhi. Can you put on record through this interview an assurance, can you give New Delhi an assurance that there will be no sprawling Chinese defence presence on sovereign Sri Lankan territory uh, because after all that is causing a great amount of concern in New Delhi. Chinese military submarines have been coming to Sri Lanka regularly. There's only one instance which became an issue under President uh, Rajapaksa when Chinese submarines came here and the Indian government claimed that they have not been informed and I think they were not informed. It was more troublesome for us because the Chinese submarine came when the Japanese Prime Minister was visiting uh, Colombo. After we became the government, we asked the Chinese, why do do in this instance send a submarine in when you've been following protocol? So uh, as then they of course informed us, no, we informed the government of Sri Lanka. And by that time it's too, it was too late and we were not the government. But as far as China is concerned, like any other country, there are people will come to Sri Lanka and visit us, at times agreed to by the Sri Lankan uh, defense authorities and at time convenient for them. But there is no defence relationship. So you had a defence relationship, at least the previous government uh, during the war, the end of the war, when China provided a lot of military equipment and uh, you know helped assist Sri Lanka to defeat the Tigers. Uh, so uh, are you saying, sir, that there will continue to be Chinese, you know, occasional visits, perhaps, but the Indian government will be kept informed? Actually, the Indian government is aware that there will be visits by Chinese and any other countries, and the normal practices will be followed in all the cases. Sir, in your recent address to an anti-terrorism conference, you spoke of the greatest threat to countries bordering the Indian Ocean or Indian Ocean Rim countries coming from non-state actors. Could you specify who these non-state actors are in Sri Lanka's case? No, we had non-state actors. We had the LTTC Tigers. As you know, if you look at the recent Australian defence study, non-state actors are going to be the biggest issue. You find that in already off the waters of Somalia. And it can keep increasing because the Mm, shipping routes of uh, the Indian Ocean are really the vital economic waterways of the world. Sir, but you referred to the LTT's uh, sea tigers. Surely that's a thing of the past. That's not a so threat. I said, I said that's so. I said now it's new technology. If you look at the attack on the South Sea of the uh, coast of Yemen, it was complete new technology. It would have been a most probably uh, boat that was. Uh, automated or run by robotics. So you don't think it's uh, the sea tigers that disappeared, the Somali pirates are there. You found the attacks there. So it's, it's becoming much easier. I mean, the most vulnerable, uh, what is most vulnerable is in this region are the high seas. Sir, and yet I will persist with that question on anti-terrorism. Uh, Sri Lanka has 21.2 million Muslims and uh, your Justice Minister recently told your parliament that 31 elite Muslims, so to speak, from Sri Lanka had joined the Islamic State. There is growing radicalization elsewhere in the neighborhood, for instance, the Maldives. And of course, as from the Indian point of view, Pakistan continues to be the hotbed of Islamist terrorism, mostly directed at India. You recently met Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on the periphery of a conference, sir. Uh, did you express uh, your concerns and India's concerns about groups like the Jaish e Mohammed and the Lashkar e Taiba, which uh, continue to live uh, and, and, and preach and uh, uh, hatred against India freely in Pakistan? I only met the Pakistani Prime Minister a very short time in Davos. Fire Sri Lanka is concerned, uh, the Muslims, the vast majority of them, worked together with the other Sri Lankans. There were about 30 who had gone to the Middle East who were in Syria. We've traced them, we are speaking with their families, some have been killed. At the moment, I think from the messages that are coming back, there's a lot of pressure on them as the Iraqi and the Syrian and the other forces are advancing and some of them seems to be trapped there. The Indo-Sri Lanka Accord of 1987, sir, is a 30-year-old agreement. There are two aspects to it which continue to remain of relevance to India. One is the uh, greater autonomy to the northern and eastern provinces uh, where uh, the majority uh, population is Tamil, Sri Lankan Tamil. And the other is uh, the clause, uh, uh, actually an appendix, that indicates that India should have greater say in what happens around the port of Trincobali and greater participation as well. Uh, could you comment on the 13th Amendment 
Parliament, for instance, and the Indo Sri Lankan Accords. Uh, and would you say that these 30 year old amendments themselves are in need of uh, new amendments? It doesn't need be. We have a constituent assembly to draft a new constitution. That's the steering committee. At the moment, we are discussing uh, devolution. Every provincial council has asked for more powers, not the north only, but those in the south, southern, western, you name it, they have asked for now. So, at the moment, the division seems to be more between the central parliament and the provincial councils, but we have to be realistic as to what can be given, what has to be. So, we, we, are, we are discussing it. It's, we are a democratic country. It's, it's not a north south issue, it's a center periphery issue now. Have you noticed a certain amount of flexibility on part of New Delhi as far as the 13th Amendment is concerned? There, is, there has been flexibility always. We appreciate that. The other issue that uh, is concerned to this 30-year-old uh, accord uh, sir, is the, 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 the right to develop Trincomalee port and a special economic zone that India claims is based upon an appendix, Appendix B, of the Indo-Sri Lanka Accord. But you reportedly have already awarded the development of the port to a Singaporean company, as you told me. And then there is this issue of the 31 oil tanks that, you know, Sri Lankan uh, companies are asking uh, for it uh, to I be returned. You're, 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 you're all behind time. Trincomalee port is a Sri Lankan port and in the Indo Lanka agreement we said we will not do anything prejudicial to the security of India. Now one, we are planning out the development of the Trincomalee port and we have asked all behind time Trincomalee port is a Sri Lankan port and in the Indo Lanka agreement we said we will not do anything prejudicial to the security of India. Now one, we can engage whoever we want to do the uh, planning of Trincomalee and we've engaged the party that is also planning out in uh, um, Andhra uh, uh, Pradesh. As the Indian free trade zone is concerned, yes, we have said we, we welcome and once, we, once they are ready, once the areas are allocated, we'd like to have free trade zones and even Maybe you could operate, someone can operate some hotels there once we identify the area. It's, it's a zoning plan. Where are we going to have industries? Where are we going to have a tourism? How are we going to dispose of waste? So all that has to be done before in any development uh, take place. We are also asking the Japanese to come in to take part on it. At the moment, uh, IOC is looking at the feasibility of a uh, refinery to be run jointly by the IOC and the CPC, which we said then should also be able to uh, refine petroleum and sell it to India or other places. So once that is done, if one, once final decisions are taken there, then we would know about the oil tanks. But I think that the, the uh, remaining issues on the oil tank has been settled between the two governments. So final question to the chapter on India and then I'll come to domestic and then I'm finished. The trade agreement with India is another thing that stuck, sir. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, th there is this fear in southern Sri Lanka that millions of Indians will over, you know, sort of uh, overwhelm uh, the tiny island state of Sri Lanka. But sir, uh, you know, with all due respect, uh, there has, seems to be a huge sprawling Chinese presence here already. And China does not even share the same cultural or linguistic links that India yeah, does. I, I, I don't think we have to bring China into all these things. There aren't a sprawling Chinese presence. I uh, there will be more Indians, but uh, certainly mode 4 is not a part of the agreement, either with India or with any other country. And the usual negotiations are now taking place between both countries. We are negotiating with India, with China and with uh, Singapore and next we go to the next round. We just finished the EU negotiations. Two last questions, sir. One to the international community. Sri Lanka was a co-signatory to a resolution for investigation into alleged violation of human rights. There is also confusion about whether the international community will continue to insist on a foreign component to the investigation team. Could you comment on that, sir? No, we are now given a co-sponsored resolution 31 or 215, where we are, we will be sorting out the issues with a longer period of uh, two more years. <coughs> as far as we are concerned, we, we, in that resolution, there is provision for us where we think it necessary to make use of expertise from abroad, foreign legal opinion, judges, others. But uh, like in India, in Sri Lanka also, foreign judges cannot sit on the bench. 
and both India and Sri Lanka uh, on, a, on policy matters, like all South Asian countries, will not join the International Criminal Court in Rome. Prime Minister Vikram Singh, there is a certain amount of concern that there may be a resurgence of the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, the terrorist group uh, against whom uh, there was a brutal civil war for 30 years in your country. Uh, first, there were some stray incidents of uh, former LTT operatives being picked up and uh, shot dead by the police and uh, caches of weapons being unearthed in the northern province. Recently, there was an assassination plot unearthed uh, to kill uh, the Tam uh, Tamil National Alliance leader, Mr. Sumantiran. Uh, is the LTTE on the rise again? Is there a fear within Sri Lanka that certain sections of the Tamil diaspora may be keeping that uh, separatism uh, alive? LTTE has been wiped out. There are small groups, sometimes used by others. Army uh, numbers are being reduced gradually. So the former rebel Karuna has founded a Tamil Freedom Party in Batikaloa. Another former rebel has founded a party named the Rehabilitated Liberation Tigers in Trincomalee. After 30 years of a bloody war, sir, how can the election commission of any sovereign state register party names containing words like Tamil Freedom and Liberation Tigers? That has been questioned by some people, but they find it up to the election commission. It's not yet decided, sir. We have, we have, there are no words that are banned as such at one stage. LTT was a prohibited name. So you have pointed out the strategic importance, the overall strategic importance of the Indian Ocean region. Uh, Japan, countries like Japan, the United States and India uh, hold joint maritime exercises in the region. And uh, one just concluded, as you pointed out, in Hambantota uh, just a couple of days ago. All three countries have, though, territorial and other issues with China. Uh, so, who's ma and you are a part of uh, the Maritime Silk Road, uh, China's Maritime Silk Road. Uh, so, from your long years of political experience, and this is your fourth term as Prime Minister, what do you see in the region in future? Do you see cooperation or confrontation? I think there'll be cooperation. Between all countries? All countries. Including India and China? Yes, there is cooperation between India and China. And so, a very last question about your counterpart in New Delhi, our India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, you have met him certainly on many occasions. Could you tell us a little bit about your personal equation with Prime Minister Modi, sir? No, I've known him for a long time. Kept in touch with him when he was in the Chief Minister, when no one thought he would be the Prime Ministerial candidate. So, we continue that uh, acquaintance and friendship. So, it's an old friendship. Mm. On behalf of Vion, I thank you very much, Prime Minister Anil Vikram Singhe, for taking out this time to meet with me. Thank you very much, Prime okay. Minister Vikram Singhe. Our brotherly country, Pakistan, felt that using radicalism, religion, extremism, uh, promoting extremism in that religion uh, would serve their interests. Mm -hmm.